Hey, 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 welcome to our church and uh, prepare for worship with our time of silence and then we will have our uh, prayer of confession. Let us pray. Merciful Lord, we confess that we lose our centuries in you and the concerns of the day overwhelm us. We do not see the blessings we have received and the good that abounds. Forgive us and lead us forward. Let us pray. O oh Lord, inspire us to trust in you, to release our worries over tomorrow, and to breathe in the beauty of your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. The word of God is a word that, that we are made in God's image that we have this linkage to God. And Jesus impresses upon us that we are accepted, that we are embraced, and that we are forgiven. It's one of my privileges to proclaim the entire forgiveness of all of our sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand for our opening hymn.
chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, as God has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept God's commandments and abide in God's love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from God. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Cleo, come on down here and get with Phoebe and I. Bring my stuff. Okay, I'm going to bring your stuff. Bring all of it. Okay, I'm going to bring all your stuff. Don't leave anything. I won't leave anything. Okay. 
Okay, here we go. I've got everything. You've got everything. Okay. So what do you what do you what do you have there? I'm going to school. You're going to school, and I'm bringing my pencils. You're bringing your pencils. How many pencils do you think you could use at once, Phoebe? How many do you think she can use at once? One. So, how many does she have? Nine. You've got nine. Pencils and pens, Phoebe. You can only use one at once. What if it breaks? Well, you, you've got nine. Back up! All eight can break! So I've got nine because I need backup. Do you think Phoebe needs backup? If she likes gently, she won't need the backup. But she's got nine. How many do you think she might take? I need nine. I need all the backup, I need all the pencils, because just in case, I need to have the extras there. You, you need the extras there. How many do you think she has to take with her? If she's silly, she might bring all nine. But what if, I'm not silly. What if she's really wise? She might bring just, just one, and just one, yeah, just one. And then you know what you might do, Phoebe? What's that? You might trust that God will provide. That's hard. I know it's hard. I want to do it all. You want to do it all. But maybe if you bring just one, just one, just one, and trust that God will provide in case you need more. Do you think God will provide? I think God will provide. So you don't have to carry all nine. Just one. Just one. I'm going to trust God. You're going to trust God. Can we try to remember that, Cleo? We can trust that God's going to help us so that we don't have to carry nine pencils and pens. Trust God and don't carry nine pencils and pens. Right. There you go. You can go sit down, Cleo. I didn't even begin yet. She's leaving. Gra <laughs> Grace and peace be unto you from God. <laughs> God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, may the church say amen. amen. We're going to go on a trip to California, so I've been thinking about this trip to California and all the things that I need to do to prepare for it. I can't, I can't worry about my wife's preparations, but i got to worry about my own. And it's rainy season in California, so what do we got to bring to California? You need to have rain gear, right? And if it, and if it, rain, it can rain like a long time in California, too, right? So just not just rain gear because, you know, the rain gear can get really heavy and soggy. So if it rains two days in a row, what do you need? You need backup. You need backup rain gear. So it could be really bad rain. We're, but it's a weather change, too, so it could be really cold. So I want to bring some long sleeve shirts, at least one long sleeve shirt. but. But, but, you know, we're going to be with kids, and kids can, like, throw up on you and stuff. So if you have one long sleeve shirt, what do you need for backup? A you need a couple extra. That's right. You need a couple extra, but it could be really warm instead of cold. It could be warm. So I, I need to bring some, what, short sleeve shirts. And then in case they barf on the short sleeve shirts, I need a backup. So I need two or three short sleeve shirts, too. And then, you know, we're going to be with our kid. So um, they may want to go out to dinner because, you know, the parents are there, so they want to go out to dinner, so, you know, who's going to pay for that, right? So they, you, you're going to take them out to dinner, and you don't want to be an embarrassment to them. You, you, you go through that when they're teenagers, and sometimes they can relapse. <laughs> so we go out to dinner with them, and we, take, we go out to dinner, so I've got to wear... I, I better bring some good shirts and nice pants, nice shoes, right? Maybe a sport jacket. I gotta be prepared for that because you don't want to embarrass the kids. You don't want to do that. No, no embarrassment if you can get away with that. And so, uh, then shoes. Oh, you gotta have shoes. We're gonna go walking with the kids. So you gotta have the sneakers. Then the shoes you wear on the plane. You gotta have your plane outfit as well. You gotta you have to have the plane outfit. So by the time I get packed, 
I'm figuring the baggage fees for all this trip are going to be as much as the flight, but you know it's three days, so that's a long time. You got to be prepared for the three-day trip. And then I figured out what's going to happen on the trip. I don't know about you all, but on the, uh, going on the trip, the first day that you're there, it's critique day. What are they doing wrong with the kids? What's wrong with the house? What's wrong with the yard? This is not the way you were raised. Why are you doing that? That's day one. Day two, you're thinking about, what do I have to do when I go home? But that's another worry that I have. When you leave the house, you've got to get somebody to take care of the house. So I've got the fire department number, the police department number, tree removal service in case a tree falls down. You don't want that to happen, but you never know. Tree removal service, the roofer in case the shingle blows off because the person's going to have to take care of all that. But you know, if the house observer doesn't do their job, you can go to Home Depot and get these cameras and set them up all around the house and then you can watch what's going on on your phone while you're away from the house. Isn't this the greatest thing in the world? So I may have to get to Home Depot to put the cameras in place so we can watch what's going on with the phone. We're going to fly out there, of course. Wasn't there a plane that had the window blown out? <laughs> Not too long ago? Was the door? We could die. Well, we could die, so we better leave the lawyer's number, the accountant's number, we better send funeral director, funeral director. You just don't want to be buried by anybody. We got to get the funeral director down there. And this afternoon, I'm going to write the obits. Because you don't want anybody writing your obit. That's an embarrassment. You know, you read your obit, it's really an embarrassment. They don't really know you. So I've got to, get, I've got to have to write the obit down to get that ready to... Day three of the trip. After you figure out what you've got to do when you're getting when you're getting home on day two, day three of the trip, you worry about getting to the airport on time. Isn't that the way it goes? Isn't that the way it goes? It's the way it goes for me. It's really interesting that Jesus said, "Come that you may have joy, and that your joy may be complete." I've come that you may have joy and that your joy may be complete. I don't look at joy as happiness. Joy is a deeper sense of inner peace and satisfaction. I've come that you may have joy. And I wonder, where is the joy? Now, the example that I gave is trivial. It's the way in which all the anxieties that we live with, all of the worries that we live with, all the planning that we live with, all the preparation that we live with, just build up and build up and build up and build up. And then there is no joy. There's no joy. Now, I used a trivial example about a trip, but let's magnify it a little bit. Uh, we have major concerns that we have about our health, about our family, about our friends, about big issues in our lives. And those issues build up and build up and there is no joy. Or you can look at it even as a microcosm, shrink it. We think about all the issues this day that I feel as though I have to do and, that, and the anxiety. If, geez, I got to get the service over at 10.30 so I can get to the house so I can paint and I have to paint this much and I have to accomplish this much and then maybe at the end of the day I can breathe. But if I don't accomplish all that stuff, then I'm going to feel badly about it, and I'm not. And there is no joy. Or we get trapped in all of our problems. Do you have any problems? <laughs> no problems. No problems. We get trapped in our problems. I have a piece coming out in the paper this week on our problems. You know. It's, it's, the, it's the hands, it's the ankle, it's the heart, it's the leg, it's the knee, the shoulder, the brain. All right. Problems and problems and problems that hold us in their grip. So when Jesus says, I've come to, to bring you joy, you got to be kidding me. Uh, and so that your joy may be complete, what are you talking about? 
So let's look at that, and, and it's a, this is a pretty simple thing. Let's go back to the, the reading from Matthew, where Jesus, in essence, is teaching the disciples, look, be not anxious, God will provide. Be not anxious. God will provide. But I got a plan. I got to bring clothing on the trip, and I've got to bring pencils to school, and I've got to. Be not anxious. God will provide. And then what Jesus does is Jesus directs the disciples to look at this moment, this day. He, he, he's very deliberate in his teaching, and he says, look, turn tomorrow over to God because tomorrow can hold you in its grip and you will be captive to it and there will be no joy. Focus on this moment, this day and the joy and the goodness and the blessings that are before you. I've come that you may have joy and your joy may be complete. Look at what is before you right now. Look at the goodness right now and there will be joy. And the danger is that you get so trapped, John, in all of this other stuff that you don't see the goodness of this day. And this isn't just a one-off teaching. When he, when he teaches the disciples to pray, it's give us this day, our day, the day. We, the focus is on this moment, this day, what is before you. So when you go to California, if your whole focus is on when you go home, you miss everything that's right there. If on preparation for the trip, all you're thinking about is the stuff that you've got to do, you miss the joy that is right there, the goodness that is right before you. And you live trapped in all that anxiety and that worry and those other concerns, and there is no joy. This whole teaching about living in joy is really a teaching about time. Be where you are. And Jesus said, I've come to restore sight to the blind. Are you blind, John, to the goodness of where you are? Or are you constantly looking for problems? And this takes an enormous discipline from us. Because according to evolutionary biology, the, per, the cave person, I'm sure I've talked about this before, the cave person who walks out of the cave, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago, walks out of the cave and says, oh, isn't this joyful, I love the trees and the grass and the flowers, isn't this wonderful, gets eaten by the tiger. But the cave person that walks out of the cave and says, where's the tiger, where's the dinosaur, that cave person survives. And that cave person's genes get passed on and passed on and passed on. So millions of years later, that's us. We don't have to worry about tigers anymore. But we're programmed to look for danger and problems. What can go wrong in this trip? That's what I have to prepare for. What can go wrong? And it's a genetic inheritance, if you understand evolutionary biology. It's a genetic inheritance that I look for everything that can happen that can go askew. And therefore, there is very little joy because I'm constantly looking for these issues. So the movement for us is we recognize that this is our tendency. And there are all the people. people. People will rationalize this up and down the street. Well, you've got to plan for the trip. I mean, you've got to pack your bag. You've got to plan for it. People will rationalize this up and down the street. Go ahead. That focus on the problems builds up the anxiety so that we are constantly looking ahead. What can go wrong? We don't see, and what did Jesus say? Come to you and have joy. Turn tomorrow over to God. Trust God. And that is completely unnatural for us. 
It takes work and it takes discipline to say, I want to look at the goodness that is before me. I want to live in that good. It takes discipline to get out of that mentality. I want to look at the goodness and the, and the, and the blessings in which I live. Then there is joy. But when I get into this other syndrome, there is only worry and anxiety and problems. So the whole movement here is, can I live my day? Look, i got to turn it over to God. God has seen me through all of this stuff in my life. All the things I didn't prepare for. All the challenges. All the issues. All the accidents. All the other problems. God has seen me through. And God will see me through tomorrow. I'm going to trust God. So I don't get carried away with all that other stuff. Trust God and see the goodness that exists right here, right now. And my experience will be one of joy. And Jesus said, I've come that you might have that joy. Just open your eyes to see it. Open your eyes to see it because it's there. Thank you for your attention. In Jesus' name. And then I invite you to stand and we're going to sing.